Hey, welcome back to CISSP Wannabes. I am Colin Weaver. You're watching the CISSP questions of the day from IT Dojo. And I give you two questions each time to hopefully help you get better and more prepared for this dreaded CISSP exam. So let's go ahead and jump in and do question number one. All right, you have purchased a server for $25,000. That server runs a e-commerce site that generates $10,000 in net profits for your company each month. That server on average experiences four denial of service attacks per year. And each time there's a denial of service attack, it costs you $3,000 in lost profits. My question for you is, what is the annualized loss expectancy and what is the annualized rate of occurrence? Here come your options. Look them over, think about it, click play when you're ready, we can answer. All right, your annualized rate of occurrence is how many times is this going to happen in a year? Well, we're told that quite plainly. It's gonna happen four times a year. So that's your ARO. So nothing particularly magical about that. Well, how, many, how much is it gonna cost you when it happens once? $3,000. Well, how many times is it going to happen in a year? Four. So if it costs you $3,000 each time it's going to happen, and it happens four times a year, three times four is 12, so your annualized loss expectancy is going to be $12,000. Uh, none of the other values matter in, in this example. Uh, if we got more involved in this with, with details that we don't have, then we could probably go other places with it. But the question just asks you to uh, specify what the ARO is and what the ALE is. So that's them. Question number two today, um, of the answer choices that I'm gonna show you, I'd like to know which of them is not a characteristic of tunnel mode IPsec. So click on pause if you need to, look those answer choices over. When you're ready, click play, we can talk it through. Okay, answer choice number one says that tunnel mode IPsec encrypts the entire original IP packet, and that is a true statement. The application layer payload, the transport layer, and the IP layer, all of it gets encrypted when you're doing tunnel mode IPsec. So a packet originates from some client, journeys across some portion of a network until it gets to one of the endpoints, its near side endpoint of the um, devices that are creating this tunnel. That device takes that entire packet and encrypts it, and then that goes inside a brand new IP packet and then is sent over to the other side of, of the tunnel. So the whole packet gets encrypted. Next answer choice says the tunnel mode IPsec hides the number of nodes on the link. And that's true, because if you look at how these tunnel endpoints behave, you have data that's coming from this side being delivered to this side. So the source of the traffic is you know, 70.168.11.44, and this endpoint is you know, 88.4.96.3. So that's all anybody in the middle is able to see. If I'm observing all your data, all I see is data that has an ESP payload okay, that has a bunch of garbled stuff that's encrypted in it, and then it's in, that ESP is inside an IP packet. That's all I can see. What I cannot see is the fact that there might be 25 computers on this side talking to 30 different servers on that side because all of their packets are being fully encrypted. The IP header, the transport layer header, as well as the application layer payload all that stuff gets encrypted and all we're able to go in and see is traffic coming from the outside interface of this tunnel endpoint going to the outside interface of this tunnel endpoint. So there's no revealing of how many are talking to how many. Uh, certainly you can't tell what they're saying, but now you can't even tell how many there are saying stuff, which is a good thing. Next answer choice says the tunnel mode IPsec provides security end to end for client and server. That is not true. Uh, transport mode IPsec could go in and do that for you, but tunnel mode IPsec is not. So the, the traditional model that you have when we write this out as simply as we can is you have a client and there's a server. So clients say it's your site in you know, location one and you have site in location two. The client wants to communicate with the server that's over in the other uh, uh, site. And so he sends his data in otherwise plain text. It comes to the VPN device who then encrypts it, sends it over to the other side of the link, who then decrypts it, and now back in its plain text form is then transmitted across the LAN segment for the, uh, for the server to receive. Which means that there is a moment on this side going from the client to the first VPN device, and then another moment coming from the 
uh, far side VPN device to the server where the data is in quote unquote plain text. Now, it, it might be TLS encrypted data or secure shell or something like that, don't care. Um, to as far as our consideration is for uh, the IPsec tunnel, there's no protection for the data there that IPsec brings to the table. So you would have to do something else if you wanted some confidentiality or something for, for those particular portions of the journey. So tunnel mode IPsec gives you no love right there. It's not involved. And then the last choice is also a true statement and it says that tunnel mode IPsec will still allow for there to be value in a network-based intrusion detection system on the LAN sides of the um, of the two links and that's definitely a true statement and that's operating on the theory that because that data is in quote unquote plain text for that initial portion of the journey from the client to the first VPN device and then from the far side VPN device to the server there's an opportunity for a NIDS to be in either one of those locations to then inspect that data and uh, that may be something that is, is a by design sort of scenario for you. Uh, or in other cases, it could be a problem because you might have a requirement that all traffic is inspected. And suddenly, if, if we can't because we're doing, say, transport mode IPsec, then you know, maybe you have an issue with that. But, uh, but in this particular question, in this scenario, a network-based intrusion detection system still has value on those uh, far sides of those two links. All right, we knocked out two more questions. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next time.